All right, so here I am live in the upstairs area where I uh, usually watch my movies. Not where I normally do my videos at. Every once in a while in my uh, double chair there when my, when my better half decides she's going to honor me with like uh, making a video with me, then uh, what I'll do is we'll sit there and we'll uh, review a film. The last one we did was way, way back on, uh, on New Year's, and it was for uh, Sweet Sweet Bats, Badass Song. But what I'm talking about tonight is a continuation of something I'm doing on my channel, which is the countdown to the half day of Black Friday sale for Vinegar Syndrome. And I went through a couple different ways to go about this. Originally, I thought, okay, I'll talk about a few different titles, a few different directors. I'll kind of review a couple films type of thing, and we'll, we'll do a discussion kind of back and forth. Then I had an idea. Well, it kind of came to me. See, there was a title that I that I'd gotten earlier and that I hadn't seen since, in, since the VHS days. Now, back in the day, well, not too long ago, hey, the movie art guys, I used to call this film uh, Norman J. Warren's uh, The Shining. was uh, kind of because it was, uh, was an ongoing joke because basically Norman J. Warren would make movies that were kind of popular, um, kind of rich sometimes on popular films. But this movie actually is probably the best Doctor Who episode never made. And I'm not even joking. That is the sci-fi supernatural film, Bloody New Year. So this is by Norman J. Warren. Now, Norman J. Warren was in Zephyr K. Movie Bandit. Sounds really low on it. Let's find, see if I can actually get that changed up a bit. How's that? When I was doing this here, no, I, there's no way I'm putting that in my kitchen. <laughs> oh, no, I'm actually in my living room. Uh, normally I'm downstairs. Uh, thanks for letting me know because it wasn't totally in. Uh, so this is where I watch my films at. So over to the, uh, to the right side of me is my uh is my tv it's just a regular flat screen 55 inch 4k the usual type stuff uh i need to get a bigger tv down the road but tonight we're talking about norman j warren uh vinegar Syndrome, as far as i know have only put out three of his titles now if you've been collecting for a while and you collected companies like anchor bay and stuff like that you especially from the uk you may have seen the you know the previous the older norman, norman j warren set that came out back then I don't have that one. It had like, uh, I think, Terror, Inseminide, uh, maybe Prey. Uh, I'm not quite sure right now, but there's a few of them on. There's three or four of them. But uh, right now, Vinegar Syndrome has put out three Norman J. Warren titles. Now, if you're not familiar with Norman J. Warren, he's an English director. Uh, he's already copied Blade New Year. So this is the... I've got my camera switched from where I normally do it, so I actually got to remember. So this is the excellent cover. Now, Bloody New Year is actually a much better film than I remembered it being. A, uh, a much, much better film. And I'm going to go through all of the Norma J. Warren titles here, So uh, because basically, if you're ordering from the Vinegar Syndrome sale when it, when it happens, you should be making sure that these three titles are, uh, are going, to be in your, uh, going to be in your collection. So, Bloody New Year is the latest one that they put out from uh, Norman J. Warren. This guy is 76 years old now, uh, the director for this film. But, it, uh, you really like this one? It's so cool. I did not expect to like this as much as I did. I'd seen it years upon years ago. I'd seen like a more recent, kind of more comedic review of it, which, which was fun. But uh, this was a, a super cool movie. What I did not expect was the fact that uh, this supernatural kind of ghost story thing would have a science fiction-y slant to it. Uh, that was kind of neat. And the, the band that uh, does the music for this film, uh, named Cry No More, and there's a... If you're a, if you're a music person, you probably are going to know this band... I think there's another name that they go under as well. Uh, but uh, they do some really good songs on here. There's uh, one I think it's called, well, there's 
Recipe for Romance, which is kind of a, it was a poppy song, which is really good and addictive. And it's one of those earworm type songs that gets, uh, that gets stuck. Yeah, I know. Maybe they're watching, you know, WWE Raw or, or maybe there's just something else going on that I don't know about right now. And actually, as you can see, I literally still have this one upstairs in uh, my, uh, cause I'm watching I got a TV upstairs in my room too. I was watching it today earlier on. Gotta remember to take it out. I hate when I forget to do that. So, <laughs> yes, let's sing. The important people will come here. That's, that's the important thing. So this one, it's a uh, standard, as you can see, uh, dual cover, Blu-ray DVD. Uh, there's a commentary with Warren on her. I haven't listened to the commentary on this one yet. His commentary is usually pretty good though. They're not too dry. And uh, I kind of usually expect uh, recently the commentaries to be, be kind of dry because the Graydon Clark commentary I just listened to was a bit dry. But I do like director-oriented commentaries, so it's really good to see that there. If you've never seen this movie, basically what it is is there's these uh, youths who are at a, uh, kind of at a carnival and they uh, run afoul to some particularly nasty carnies who, uh, who chase them. So they, they grab a boat and go out, you know, to get away from the carnies, go to this island where they get stranded. Uh, you know, their boat kind of crashes, they get stranded on this island. And uh, before you know it, horrifying, creepy, weird things are happening. They're seeing like visions and mirrors. They're, uh, they're hearing voices. Uh, things are coming at, a, at, a, at a walls. There's like things that are coming alive. It's a really cool film. The, uh, the, the soundtrack in this one is really, really good. Uh, especially the, the songs by Crown Moore. I'm, uh, I do like the poppy style music as well, so this really, really got into my skin in all the right ways. The acting on this is exactly what you'd expect the acting for this movie to be, and actually not too bad overall. Uh, it does have a, what, what is her name? I think Susie, oh, there. I'm cheating, I'm looking on here. Hey, hey, Sasha. Uh, Susie Ad Addison. Oh, I, know, I know I've pronounced that name wrong, but uh, she's... Actually, uh, kind of big from oh, her mom, Susie Addison. Her mom's in it. her mom is somebody big, and that my dad likes actually. Judy, June Whitfield. Yeah, so she is the daughter of June Whitfield, and uh, she's starring in this movie right here. It's a really cool little film. Uh, I love the way it goes. I love the ending of the film. I pretty much love everything about this film. I thought it was going to be like a slow burn or kind of boring. Not all of Norman J. Warren's films run at a, you know, snap, 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 kind of fast pace. This one does. Uh, this one was actually done in 1987. And, uh, oh, I think it's 89 here. 86. It says 86 here. So we'll go with 86. Though the, I know this, that the soundtrack for this one that the band did came out in uh, a year later, came out in 87. So... Bloody New Year, should you pick it up during the sale? Yes, yes you should. If you like haunted houses, weird pseudoscience, time travel, uh, Evil Dead, because yes, there are aspects of Evil Dead in this film. If you've gotten the, if you went out and got the movie Demon Wind, for instance, which I'm guessing most of you did, that would be that June Whitfield, yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, her daughter's in this. Uh, if you got Demon Wind, this this movie is kind of a, a perfect double feature with uh, with Demon Wind. It does have some like suckling. I haven't gotten to watch the suckling yet since I got it. It's one I that I do have. Uh, again, thanks to uh, thanks to Brian uh, from Just to This, and hopefully you heard that podcast that we did. Uh, but uh. This is my latest watch. I gotta watch the suckling this week, actually. Definitely check this one out. Yeah, if this is a great double feature with Demon Wind. If you picked up Demon Wind earlier on because that a cool and tickler cover, uh, grab this one. It's a perfect complement to it. Now there are two other films that Norma J. Warren put out for a Vinegar Syndrome. I got both of them here. Now both of these are available now without the slip cover because the slip covers. Are, uh, are sold out. But before I do that, I do have something that I do have to say. Vinegar Syndrome made an announcement about the Halfway to Black Friday sale. They're doing something different. And I'm kind of intrigued. 
So rather than having the two secret titles, which they normally do, if you've been following their sales and you've been going along like, like I have for the last two or three years, uh, every time that they have a sale coming up, there are two secret titles. And in the last year, they've, done, they've given people the option to actually order the two titles sight unseen, uh, but that would lock in their order, and then they could just add more onto it when the sale comes up. This year, there's something different being done. And uh, what that is is that they have, instead of the secret two titles, they have a secret package uh, coming out. So there are four films, I think, in the package. Only one of them is one that we know. The other ones are all secret titles. The one that we do know that's going to be there, oh, <laughs> is uh, hopefully you don't miss this one, is a, is a Mountaintop Motel Massacre. So if you're familiar with that film, Vinegar Syndrome is putting that one out in a new restored format. We don't yet know what the features are going to be, but if you do go onto the Vinegar Syndrome website, <clears throat> you will see the new slipcover that it's going to have. <clears throat> Anyway, just wanted to let you know that before we went any farther. Don't, who thinks Vegasim should hire me to work for them? I think it would do pretty good. Uh, anyway, so the... Uh, I think it's both, uh, Warlock, as far as, as far as I can tell right now. I, I think the May package is going to be like a secret package with just Mountaintop, Mountaintop Moto Massacre being shown first and they're going to kind of roll out little secrets they say that some people if they've been following them online and maybe if you've been going on certain like websites and that that you'll be able to uh to tell ahead of time what some of those secret titles are going to be now i don't know if all the titles are going to be like horror related titles they usually are or if they're going to be like any more any of the exploitation titles as well in there which i do kind of enjoy though i know that they're uh that recently, in the last year or so, uh, Vinegar Syndrome did this kind of like limited edition label. Oh yeah, I would love to see Vinegar Syndrome do Just Before Dawn, actually. Uh, I think that was put up by 88 Films, but uh, considering 88 Films kind of like takes a lot from Vinegar Syndrome, I've noticed that recently, uh, that uh, hopefully they can turn it around. Uh, I hope it's good. I hope it's like something that's going to be interesting. I'm hope. Here's the thing, though. I normally get the two titles. I, I, I like to put some money aside to actually make sure I can actually avail. Here is a round avail of the sale. Oh, I, I'm gonna hashtag that somewhere. Avail of the sale. Doesn't that sound good? Uh, so basically, that's a good question. I would prefer the two secret titles. But I'll give them credit for like going with different things just to see uh, what you know where it can go with it, what they can do with it. But I, uh, I'm kind of excited. I'm, I, I can't get the, I want the package, but I have a limited amount that I can spend on on the sale. I'm actually overstretching my budget for that month by not buying anything at all. Like that's why I'm seeing anything come in this house in that last little while. Um, because basically, I want to be be saving up, saving up for that sale. So what I decided to do, and I, I kind of took from my channel, and I did take. I've been reading a lot of comics lately. Free shipping cans is hundred dollars. Yeah. Uh, so uh, and I will. I've put aside a bit, like over that. But I don't want. See, that's the thing. If I get the package, that's probably four titles, right, Warlock? But that means that's that that's ninety dollars, which is going to be like a hundred and twenty under. 30 uh, Canadian and uh, that's going to take up a, a bit a fair chunk of uh, what I had uh, a plan to spend for the uh, for the sale see basically what I want to do is uh, uh, yeah I like just before down it would seem slow paced especially for today you know where things kind of move at a at a rapid pace, look at things like Terrifier. Um, but yeah, so that's, that would take a lot away from that. And, and I, uh, I do do a lot of Vinegar Syndrome re related stuff on my channel, obviously. Um, if you want to find a bit of Vinegar Syndrome stuff, this is where a lot of people come. Um, thank you for that, by the way. I, I do appreciate that. I, I get more 
comments and, uh, and questions about Villiger syndrome than I do any other company. So I, I've kind of leaned into it. But uh, yeah, I, wanted, I want this to be the epic haul that I do for Vinegar Syndrome. I want this to be better than any haul that I've ever done for Vinegar Syndrome. And so far, it's been like pretty, I've done a modest like haul of around eight titles, I think. That was, was the highest Vinegar Syndrome haul that I ever had. But uh, I'm hoping to do, uh, to do better than that this year. So uh, we'll see. I'm, uh, I've been going through different things. And what I was going to say before, and I do apologize, I do very off sometimes. I've been reading comics lately, and I decided to kind of get some inf inspiration from some comics and to, for this portion of it, hey, tell me films, to take this, these videos in kind of an arc. So I'll be talking about all types of subjects over the next, uh, over the next month. But I do have a, a countdown to Vinegar Syndrome's Halfway to Black Friday sale, which is kind of the overarching arc of my videos until the sale happens. And of course, the reveal of the titles that I get and stuff like that. So uh, hopefully that's going to help people that are uh, looking into buying some stuff. And uh, hopefully some of you guys are interested in that. So we'll, uh, oh, I'm going to try to get as much interesting and unique videos and topics out of that as I possibly can. Anyway. I, uh, <clears throat> we're talking, tell me, about Vinegar Syndrome, and uh, tonight we're talking about a, a director. I decided to do a director series for Vinegar Syndrome because they do put out, like, different directors that I think uh, people should look into. Now, I had planned to do, like, two or three directors, but I thought I'd space it out because we could talk about other things and do, like, one director per video, and tonight it's Norman J. Warren. I already mentioned Bloody New Year, which I recommend that everybody should pick up. It's a great double feature with uh, Demon Wind. It is, uh, it is part Evil Dead, it is part sci-fi, and it is uh, part kind of a ghost story, I guess. We've got a lot of love here for Just, the, for just Before Dawn, which I agree, I think is been, I would love for that to be one of the secret ones. Can, can you imagine if that was one of the ones in that secret title? If you're getting like something like Mountaintop Motel Massacre, and like next one is like Just Before Dawn, everybody would, would totally have that package. Even me, and that would cut down on my uh, on my Vincent buying for that uh, for that month. Yeah, they've only said one of the titles. The May two thousand nineteen secret priority package is ninety dollars, as uh, Warlock said, and the uh, it's four titles. And all we know right now is that there's Mountaintop Motel Massacre. I do like the uh, the cover that they chose for it. I think they'll probably use the regular kind of like twisted like cover that we've. All seen on our Anchor Bay editions of Mountaintop Motel Massacre. So they say that uh, there's a lim so Vinegar Syndrome 275 question mark Blu-ray DVD combo limited edition of 2000. Actually, that's a good uh, that's a good thing to do. We'll count down the years, like the slasher years, because I think the best years for slashers are around around 80 to 84. With 81 probably, 81 and 82 probably being the two best years for slashers. And for me, the golden age of like uh, of that style of horror. Uh, Vinegar Syndrome 276 is, uh, gonna, is Mountaintop Motel Massacre. Ah, Warlock knows where it's going. And that's going to have a limited edition of 2000 for the slipcover edition of it. Secret Halfway to Black Friday release number one. So these are the, those two are just regular, you know, secret releases. So we will probably see the revelation of what 275 is. Uh, before uh, before the sale comes, but 277 and 278 are going to be the secret halfway to Black Friday releases, which makes me think that coming closer to coming on Black Friday, we're going to have the option, just like Vinegar Syndrome normally does, to have those two titles on their own. So uh, that'll be that'll be interesting. That's the way I think that I'll I'll probably go with it. I probably won't get the pre-order for disc for a Blu-ray set. So the Secret Half of the Black Friday release number one is Vinegar Center number 277, in case you're wondering where, how far they are, how many Vinegar Centers there are. And uh, it's a Blu-ray DVD combo pack. It's a limited edition of 3,000. And the same thing with 278, which is the second Black Secret Half of the Black Friday release Blu-ray DVD combo pack, and that is limited. Hey, Andy, how's it going? To uh, 3,000 copies as well. So it'll be interesting to see what those are. And we can all start, like, guessing and kind of, like, uh, trying to figure out what those uh, what those films could be. Now, the next 
in the Norman J. Warren releases, and the first one that was released, I probably could have done in order, is the movie called Terror. Now, it has an amazing slipcover, which unfortunately this slipcover is out of print right now. And uh, this is the, uh, the alternate artwork on the interior box. And once you get it, the artwork does kind of look like this. And this is the alternate artwork slipcover right there. Now, the Terror, so Terror is probably, it's a decent film, but it's, it's my least of the three Warren titles that they put out so far. I, uh, my favorite title, I'll, I'll tell you actually in, uh, in a couple minutes, but uh, this is a uh, kind of a witchcraft style film, kind of different. It starts off, it's uh, because Warren does work with a lower budget, Movies like uh, Bloody New Year and other one, other of that ilk. Uh, yeah, that was Jello. It does well. The way that he uh, Warren did it is basically he said he went and he saw Suspiria, and he said, "I think I can make that." So he made Terror. So Terror is Norman J. Warren's version of Suspiria. He's out and out at uh, mid of that, but uh, there's not a lot of like uh, aside from the witchcraft aspect of it, and a couple of the. Uh, of like the outdoorsy sequences, I wouldn't say it's too Suspiria-esque, in, uh, in my opinion. It, uh, it's definitely its own style of film, and it's more like the older style of kind of witchcraft films that you would imagine it being than, uh, than that. And because there's a gothic sense and a, and a certain feel to that, the lower budget kind of betrays the film a little bit at the beginning. But he does the best with, uh, with, with what he has. I thought that the actors were, were, were pretty decent. But out of, all, out of the three there, and I do think that it's definitely, definitely is worth owning. Um, Terror is probably the, uh, the least, in my, in my humble opinion, in my not so humble opinion, uh, of the Warren films that have been put out so far. And that's Terror. The first one, the one that made me want to get all the other... No Norm J. Warren films was this one right here, and this is Prey. And if you haven't seen Prey, I uh, strongly recommend it. It's a great film. Now this is a uh, again, it's a bit of science fiction in this one as well, as you can tell. Uh, but it really deals more with uh, the psychological thriller aspects of it, and the uh, and the character dynamics than it does with actual you know science fiction. Uh, but he does put those. Uh, he do, does manage to put like different tropes from different genres and kind of cross them over to uh, to kind of get his me message across. No, that's okay, movie madness. A giallo film is a uh, is an, is an Italian film. Think of it almost like an Italian slash film. They're usually like kind of like murder murder mysteries. Uh, some of the uh, best known directors for a giallo are Dario Argento, uh, Sergio Martino, Lucio Fulci. Hey, Elvin, how's it going? Uh, if you haven't checked out any of those, like if you've seen movies like Deep Red or uh, or anything of that ilk, like uh, Tenebrae, uh, Bird of Crystal Plumage, uh, those style films, that Strange Vice and Mrs. Ward, uh, those are all like giallos. J j think of it like as an Italian slasher mystery. It's uh, the word giallo just means uh, or gory. They usually are actually pretty gory films, and uh, they usually are like. Uh, Pretty gory, and they're based on the giallo means yellow because it's based on the on, on the covers of the mystery novels that came out in Italy at the time. They had like yellow covers. <laughs> Not a problem. I love pieces. <laughs> pieces of Spanish giallo, uh, and I do consider it giallo, although uh, it does kind of cross that line between is this a giallo or is this a slasher film. I particularly myself consider pieces to be a giallo film, even though it's not done in Italy. So Pieces has the feel of Jello film. It's kind of all over the place uh, in many ways, and it, but it has that mystery, and uh, there, there's definitely the payoff. Are you serious? Oh. Oh, of course it is. I have got to stop saying that S word because of my phone, you know? Uh, I'm a, I, will, I don't think I'm gonna get in like any more this year. I did want to get into Toronto again this year. I was hoping to go for the uh, convention, but uh, it doesn't look that way. Get a picture of Lumberto Baba. Tell him I said hi if you're going there. 
Yeah, Pieces is a fantastic little film. If you've never checked it out, it was put up by Grindhouse Releasing. Uh, they put out an amazing edition of it. Arrow had put out like a, a DVD edition of it earlier, uh, which has a great cover. <laughs> it's done that before. Uh, like on here. And I remember once it was, uh, I was out, and I don't know what I said, but it started playing, uh, uh, I know, you know, the Chris Connell song. You know my name. But, uh, oh, anyway, Prey, definitely a great title to pick up, and uh, one that I do strongly recommend. Now, if I was to put these in order of, like, uh, which one to get first, second, and third, it's actually pretty simple for me. I think uh, Bloody New Year, surprisingly, and I love the movie Prey, tops the list of the Norman J. Warren films that I have. This is actually my favorite. I'm actually very surprised to say that. Uh, Prey is a very, very close second, and uh, this could have flipped back and forth, but I just, there's something about, about Bloody New Year that I just really like, strongly recommend it if you haven't picked it up. And of course, Terror is a fun little film. You know, there's only three of them so far. Uh, during the sale, you'll have a chance to get your complete Norma J. Warren triple collection. Unless there's a, one of the secret toes is Norma J. Warren, then there'll be a fourth. But uh, since you guys have been quiet on on Warren, we'll go for elsewhere with our uh, with this. But I do think that uh, Warren is the director that you guys should look into. Sorry, guys, I'm really thirsty tonight. <clears throat> Now you guys seem to be interested in pieces, which is kind of neat because first we got Just Before Dawn, which uh, Warlock uh, let everyone know that's coming up from Scorpion releasing, which means it's going to be a while before I get it. And, and then there's, uh, and then, and pieces, which apparently B Movie Archive still hasn't picked up yet. Pieces was a controversial release when it came out. Does anybody remember the controversy behind the, movie, behind the release of uh, Grindhouse's pieces? Specifically when it came to Diabolic DVD? It's a nice slip, but honestly, you just need the movie. The, there's no difference, uh, Movie Madness, aside from the slip. And when the slips are available, I, I always say go for the slip, but don't overpay for like a slip when... If there were, if that was a different, there's another disc on the inside of it, right? Uh, then I'd say, yeah, maybe, but this and this is the same thing. So really, you paid like 80 bucks for a slip cover. They're great slip covers, but they're not 80 bucks great slip covers. You know what I mean? Phone and flicks. Apparently they're pretty fast, but they're a bit, they're a bit pricey when it comes to the, uh, to the shipping costs. And uh, this year particularly, like, uh, I'm trying to keep my, uh, my costs down a bit. Obviously, I'm, you know, I'm, going back to, uh, I'm going back to school. Financial situation has changed a little bit. Uh, those, are, uh, those are things that have like, slowed down a bit, of my, uh, a bit of my spending. And I do try to, like, uh, right now, focus on certain times. Uh, so... Uh, I'll probably get that one down the road, but I'll, uh, I don't think I'll be getting anything until, uh, did you pay 80 bucks for Bloodhook? I, uh, I, Bloodhook, I, I missed the slip. I'm good with that. Uh, the slip's awesome, but I'm, uh, I'm, that's one of the ones that's on my list that I am going to grab. The, you know, the regular edition, standard edition of it, when it, on, uh, when the, when the sale goes out. I've seen the movie Bloodhook years ago, but I've never seen the Bloodhook that you've seen because the blood look that you've seen wasn't released. That's what's really cool about that film. You're seeing an actual uncut, never before released version of, a, of the film Bloodhook. The, uh, it was put out by Troma originally and it was uh, fairly truncated. But Bloodhook has become, has quickly become one of those films that's been like a, uh, some would say a guilty pleasure, like if you like to use that term, or uh, kind of a must for a lot of people. Uh, it does have a sexy slipcover. I'm not, not going to deny it. And if I had the bones to do it, man, I would. Uh, but uh, I have to decide based on, uh, you know, what I want. And if I spend $80 on a film or $100 for a slip or something like that, then that's like four, three or four other films that I, that I can't have. Hey, Corey! <laughs> uh, 
and I need Bloodhook in my collection. I really do. I still don't have Star Time, too. Does anybody recommend Star Time? Need another recommended slasher? That's a good idea, guys. What would you recommend as a slasher for B-Movie Archives to pick up? You mean from, from what company? Are we talking the Vincent thing that's coming up? Uh, I'm assuming you got all the classics, you know, like Mad Men and Christmas Evil and stuff like that, you know. Don't Go in the Woods. Graduation, all those. You know, those are, I'm going to guess that you already, uh, you already picked those up. Uh, Bloodhook is a different type of slasher film. Skinner, excellent. Excellent choice. Skinner is a great release from Severin. Not only is it a great release from Severin, but it's uh, all the features are amazing as well. So if you're looking for like an outside of Vinegar Syndrome release, Severin Skinner is an outstanding release. And not only that, but one, after you watch the movie first, after you watch the movie, watch all the features because all the features are fascinating. Um, I uh, got that during the... Uh, when I got my Jello. Like you mentioned, Jello stuff. Jello people... Jello films will normally have, oh, here we go, no they don't, killers that wear black gloves. So Severin, last Black Friday, put out a set called the All the Colors of Jello set. And it came with these here like black gloves for all my Jallo killer needs. I love the fact that it's branded with all the colors of Jallo, which is the box set they put out, and the uh, Severin logo on the other side. It's actually a really nice, well done pair of gloves, and uh, I keep it in my display cabinet there. And that is awesome though. Uh, yeah, these are one of my favorite things that I own. The uh, and this is the set there. So if you are wondering about Jallos, Severin did put it, this set, Movie Madness. This is, oh, I gotta be careful. Yeah, okay, we're good. All the colors of Jallo. And uh, one of the Jallos that's with that is All Colors of the Dark with Edwidge Finch. And that's a very different kind of odd, strange, supernaturalish Jallo. I do keep that up there because I, uh, I do tend to watch that one uh, quite a bit, and I go back to its trailer tape. Ked Ellinger did like the commentary, and I'm a huge Ked Ellinger fan. I did listen to, uh, I was watching some films last night, and I just, I don't mean to, like, to kind of, like, go off uh, on, a, on a different tangent, but I did watch, and I do recommend this one. The William Castle, I was looking at the William Castle, like, box set sort of put up by Indicator. Uh, that, uh, like, really, like, serious, uh, Really cool stuff. I listened to, uh, I put on 13 Frightened Girls, which is one that I uh, didn't remember. It was kind of like a Nancy Drewish type one. Uh, very different from William Castle, actually. And there's a commentary on it by uh, Sam Deegan, which I, uh, I do strongly uh, recommend. Hold on a minute. It has become kind of apparent. I'll be right back. As spring comes closer, unfortunately, so do insects and ants, and the, as the ground is melted, they slowly try to find refuge in warmer areas. That is that ant's last, re last refuge. I'm not an insect person. Uh, a massacre video, yeah, they are putting a final stab. I got like the old DVD edition that I would love to get an updated copy of that. Masker Video, they're the same guys that put it Fiend, I think, with uh, Don Dollar, And that was a really good release. Actually, I had a hidden movie on it. I remember recommending it. Recommending it. How dare I? Yes, they're such hard workers. It's a big guy. And normally I could probably put it outside, but I was kind of being fast. And... Hmm. 
Now you know why I wear the black gloves. But yes. Oh no, you can ask all I am. I'm super old. I'm ancient. <laughs> I'm 48. Um, I, uh, yeah, he's probably, he's, he's, you know, he's get, getting up here, going to kick back. And I'm like, I feel guilty now, guys. Yeah, I'm 48 years old. I was 40 on my birthday. It's March 31st. I'm in Aries. Uh, used to be back in the day, I'd be like, oh, I would never tell my age. I'd be like, oh, my God. Nowadays, honestly, when you get to be my age, you're glad to be my age. You don't really, like, uh, get concerned too much. You're 19. See, I envy you one. Your youth, youth <laughs> vampire thing, but no, and the fact that uh, you're gonna be seeing a lot of these movies, the best that they've ever been seen since they've been in the theater for the first time, and uh, that's that's a that's a great place to be. Now, you gotta remember when when I was growing up, uh, VHS, uh, you know, that was the thing, and not only that, but a lot of the movies that you guys buy now that I buy. Um, Blu-ray, special editions, limited edition sets, numbered, all the type of thing. They didn't get released. Uh, we got a lot of like different releases, and if anything was kind of horror, uh, it, it was basically I like that. <laughs> uh, it was basically the the regular stuff. And every once in a while, it was only after Anchor Bay came around, and that was later in the days of VHS that we actually got up, got some cool stuff. Uh, you'd have to like order from away. So you like the twins. My, uh, one of my, si my sisters, actually, Gemini. I have two sisters. <laughs> and uh, you'd have to order, like, from a video search ma'am or something like that. And you get, like, basically somebody would have, like, a master somewhere. And you get, like, and they'd tape it off. And you'd get, like, a case. And it would have, like, a, usually, like, a, a pale green or kind of aquamarine, like, stock cover with the name and, a, like, a description on the back with the year. And if you were lucky, if you were lucky, they'd list a couple of the people that acted in the film. And uh, you just had to take it no, in whatever condition that, uh, that, you, uh, that it came in because it was no other way to get that film. Now, my uh, better half is from Morocco. She was actually born in Casablanca. She grew up in her teen years in, uh, in Marrakesh. Uh, it was different there. Uh, it's actually really neat. And uh, I will need a little story out here. So basically... There were rental places, but uh, exactly. Uh, the, I, I spent, God, I don't know how much I spent on my first VHS. It cost a bit. Even the blank tapes were expensive back then. But my better half, she's, you know, she's younger than me. Uh, she, went, she would go to this, this store that would rent uh, VHS, but they didn't know what, you didn't know what they were. You'd say, you know, I want some movies. Or you could even say, John, I want some horror, or I want some action, or... I want to mix. And they give you like three or four tapes. You would not know what they were until you put them in to your VCR. So just think about that for a second. You go to a video store. It's kind of a neat concept. I really wish that something like that would have been done. And they were like, you know, here, I, want to, I really want to watch horror. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, yeah, here's, here's three tapes. These have horror on them. And they would, and they'd have good stuff. I mean, like, um, one of the movies that she was introduced to this way was the fantastic uh, Suave film. I, I never get his name right. Uh, Mikel Suave? Well, S-O-A-V-I, whoever wants to pronounce that for me. Uh, film Stage Fright. And uh, she hadn't seen it since she was a kid during that, uh, the days of the uh, mystery rentals. And she asked me, said, can you find a movie, it's about this killer, and he's got an owl mask, and they're, I think it's, I don't think it's English. Oh, I know. I went to Ontario, up to, uh, up to Toronto, you guys know this, uh, to uh, Bay Street Video, which is a fantastic store. If you're in the area, definitely check them out. Um, and they, it was pretty much my dream store. The rented stuff. And they, uh, and you can, they sold stuff as well. Yeah, that's the thing. My, uh, my, uh, ma my mom's like, or, well, her ex, one of her exes, hmm. he uh, was, uh, at the time they were together, 
he uh, did electronics. So he was good at fixing stuff up, like VCRs and stuff like that. So we'd go out like in Mississauga, where I was living at the time. Thanks a lot. Uh, no, Bay Street is not. It's it's not a chain. B Movie Archives. It's, it's one store. Uh, that's it's one of the independents, like one of the last of the independents here, and in, uh, in 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 uh, like in Canada. So up and uh, tell them I said hi, Warlock. <laughs> uh, I'll be up there again as soon as I can to buy, hopefully just as much as I bought last time, which I'm sure they will like because I, I I bought a lot last time, which you probably know. <laughs> Because <laughs> you know them. Um, but yeah, we'd, uh, we used to, have, so basically he would fix up VCRs, right? So uh, basically somebody would have a VCR, they wouldn't, you know, something like simple would go wrong with it. Uh, he'd fix them up and uh, kept a couple, you know, sell the rest. So I had, I was an early, like, owner of, uh, in the VCR era. But when I lived with my nan, we uh, she didn't own a, uh, a VCR, uh, so uh, yeah, they're actually really good because they actually are really cinephiles as well. Um, so I'd have to rent them. Oh, I know. Did you notice that Street Fighter set for some reason disappears and goes off of Amazon? CA? like it's not on there. Last time I looked, it wasn't on there. It was on there. And then it said it's not no longer available. Then it was on there again. Then it said it's no longer available. And since then, it's the Street Fighter set. That's the Sunny Chiba set, guys, coming in. That was put out by uh, by Shout Factory. Uh, if you haven't seen them, they're like, and you like the kind of the fun martial arts action films, I do recommend the Sunny Chiba Street Fighter set. It's really cool. I remember seeing Street Fighter in the uh, in the theater, um, and uh, it wasn't when it came out, uh, but. Uh, it's kind of neat because he's on this he's on this boat and there's like like it's raining and there's wind and he like hits this guy on the head for anybody that is, is not you know, <laughs> has not seen the movie Street Fighter and I'm not talking about the Jean Claude Van Damme one uh, and he hits him on the head and then we see an X-ray <laughs> of the guy's skull cracking um, so pretty brilliant bloody brilliant uh, the Street Fighter set's one I'm looking for. Uh, the Sister Street Fighter set, two from Arrow, would complete your collection if you don't have that one, Warlock. Then you'll have them all. But if you really want to get them all, if you really want to get into it, then see if they got the, a copy of AGFA's Lady Street Fighter. No, it has nothing to do with any of those other films. It's not a part of the franchise at all. But it is unintentionally hilarious and definitely worth owning. But yeah, so if you're a fan of that type of stuff, the action stuff, I do recommend that. Um, another company that I gotta throw some love to is MVD Rewind, uh, which have done like a lot of great stuff in a lot of genres recently. Day of Anger, fantastic. Uh, I got the Arrow Blu-ray. That's one that I watched, you know, under, there's another name that was under. Yes! Now tell me, have you watched Lady Street Fighter yet, Warlock? Because if you have, did you notice that Renee Harmon sounds like Tommy Wiseau? Because that, that blew our minds when we were watching it. Even down to the point where <laughs> she's like, oh, hello. <laughs> and uh, I better half looked at me and she said, oh my God, that... This may be Tommy Wiseau's mom. We may have cracked it. We may have cracked the Wiseau code. Uh, wouldn't that be freaky, though? Because, you know, there's so little known about Tommy Wiseau, like where he's from and any of that, how old he actually is. Wouldn't it be weird if Tommy Wiseau... Oh, dude. It's <laughs> worth checking out. Uh, his mom was Renee Harmon. Once you see, you'd be like, that would be the perfect story. They could make another movie then on Tommy Wiseau. I would watch that movie. If Renee Harmon was Tommy Wiseau's mom in real life, I would definitely watch that movie because her story, pretty fascinating too. She was actually kind of a sex symbol, sort of like a minor sex symbol back in the day. And she was married to like, a, well, she was ran around with like gangsters and stuff like that.
Oh, hot. Yes, that's said. I'm pretty sure. Don't quote me on it. Now, I wish my better half was here because she'd be at us. He's out of town. Um, but I'm pretty sure there's a character named Mark and something very similar to Oh, hi, Mark is said within that film. Um, so definitely, guys, if you're a fan of like The Room, but you wish it had lots of action in it uh, and a lot of and a lot of nudity, then uh, definitely check it out. Corini Del Rio? I don't know. Uh, I don't. But don't feel bad, B Movie Archives, because I butcher names on here all the time. Simple ones, too. I, I'm consistently butchering. Uh, I'm not even going to say it anymore. But I'm just going to say the guy that plays the Joker in the new Joker movie. I've given up. I swear every video I make, I say it different. <laughs> I actually own the Ringo films. Uh, there's only two legitimate Ringo films. The rest are, uh, are knockoffs. Kind of like a lot of the Sartana and Django and so ones, right? Uh, there's uh, the, air if you get the Arrow set, Joaquin, thank you. <laughs> uh, then uh, if you get the Arrow set, then you'll have the entire uh, Ringo collection. There's only two of them. Uh, uh, there's a Pistol for Ringo and Return of Ringo. Those are the two actual legitimate films. Anything else that you get is going to be kind of like an Italian knockoff. Kind of like uh, it's about as Ringo as Patrick still lives as actually Patrick, right? Oh, autocorrect to kill you on Italian names, man. Uh, you forget, like autocorrect kills me on, on just regular words sometimes. But on Italian names, it's like insane. You, you can forget, like, <laughs> how many times I'll put in Lucio Fulci and then it'll correct it to something else. And I'll go back and I'll retype it and I'll retype it and I'll cursing because I'm like, come on, I've typed Lucio Fulci into my phone a million times. You have to know that's what I'm trying to type. Happens all the time. <laughs> but no, yeah, I uh, recommend it. So if you haven't seen it, definitely pick it up. So you think that it's, it's a case of basically having enough printed and then uh, kind of bring, it, bring them out again. This happened, though, even before they came out. Did you? Even before it was released. But maybe they, you know, they thought they were going to get like a substantial more print run than they originally did. But uh, I wish I knew Italian. It's a, it's a fantastic language. Like we, um, I speak, you know, I speak English. Any other Westerns? Uh, the Sartana set, B Movie Archives, worth getting. Definitely worth picking up. Great. I, I think that's still available, right, guys? Um, great set from Arrow. Um, I would uh, strongly recommend that. You know, Day of Anger. That's when you said you're getting, right? Or you, or you just picked up. That's that one, of course. Uh, Cemeteries Without Crosses, I like. That's... Uh, it's kind of a different one. It has a, uh, a famous French star actually in uh, in that one. That my uh, that my better half. She's a huge fan of. And uh, Nick Kino has put out a few different ones. Like uh, they put out the Sabata film. So if you're, you know, Lee Van Cleef, and uh, Yul Brenner. Is it Yul Brenner? I'm trying to remember now. In the Sabata films. And uh, there's also, of course, you know, the Dollar Trilogy, Django. Uh, I got a now, Django was put out. They're, they do have a couple Django films uh, through Arrow. Now, they tried to put out the original Django, but unfortunately couldn't. Kyoma is a great film. Uh, yeah, definitely Warlock. I think you'll like that. I got like an old, like kind of Mill Creek double feature of that. Spaghetti Western is, is probably exactly what you think of movie madness. All it really means is their westerns, they're done in Italy. Charles Bronson. That'd be nice. Um, they're just, that's literally what it means. Now, back in the day when the term Spaghetti Western was first used, actually, a lot of the Italian filmmakers that were making those uh, kind of pushed against the, uh, the, the term because they uh, considered it to be something that was kind of derogatory. Uh, Italian Western, Spaghetti Western. 
over time though, they realized the term spaghetti western actually worked well for them. And uh, for uh, for a lot of people, like for me included, and I, I do like the regular westerns, but uh, my my favorite westerns of all time are are spaghetti westerns. And uh, like I'll take, and this is gonna sound like sacrilege to some people, uh, especially if my my dad or my uh, my pop was still around. My dad was here, and my pop was still around, because uh, they were they're huge Audie Murphy fans, and I know uh, they're uh, they like you know guys like you know like uh, Tex Ritter and uh, Durango Kid and people like that. But I grew up at a different time. I grew up in a different era. Spaghetti westerns were kind of my thing. I was less John Wayne, and uh, and more just uh, more Clint Eastwood or. Lee Van Cleef, I really, <laughs> or George Hilton, guys like that. Uh, George. Fist of Dynamite doesn't get a, doesn't get the credit that it, that it deserves. That's definitely true. A spe- if that isn't helped by one of its titles being, was it Die You S- Die or Duck You Sucker? Right, Duck You Sucker is that one of the titles that that movie went under? Uh, Duck You Sucker, I think it was. Um, I'm not sure if it was trying to like play off of like the kind of the burgeoning black exploitation genre at that time, uh, just with that title. It was just it was an odd title. But I have seen I have noticed that Kino has been putting out uh, a lot of the uh, those uh, those Leone films. Actually, uh, viewer and actually a good friend of mine on here, uh, James uh, James Hayes, actually sent me. Uh, like the uh, Good, the Bad, and the Ugly from Kino. Now, I see the Kino sale this month. I did. I, uh, it was very tempting for both me and my better half because she is a collector of Kino, as you guys know. She collects a lot of the Kino animation, the, uh, you know, the Pink Panther, the, the Pot of Freeling, stuff like that, and a lot of their action films. Uh, and you know, some of their, you know, their cheesy sci-fi because she loves cheesy sci-fi. But uh, because like, we're trying to save up for the, for the Vinegar Syndrome sale, um, we, you know, we decided, and she had a couple like, business trips to do this month as well. She's uh, gone now for two weeks into uh, where, where we used to live, actually, into St. John's. And I'm, I'm actually very jealous because I would love to be there. I, uh, I love the St. John's area. It's, uh, I'm, I'm an urban person, and where I live right now is, uh, is kind of more of a smaller town. It, it's a very nice place, and the people here are extremely, are extremely friendly. It's uh, just that I'm used to, uh, to more of an urban setting. I, I, no, I cannot think of anything spaghetti western-wise that Vinegar Syndrome has released, actually. Uh, or if there's something, you know, feel free to like, you know, correct me. Um, I'm, I'm all up for being corrected. Uh, Vinegar Syndrome started out very differently than, than where they are right now. And I think that's kind of something to get into, like over time. Although some of Vinegar Syndrome's earliest, I did, I get, I do have the master actually. Uh, again, from James. Fantastic. I love that show. I used to watch when I was a kid. So uh, it's one that I that I had to get. Well, he probably made the right decision because Dirty Harry is obviously an iconic character, and uh, he wasn't even the first choice was for Dirty Harry. I think that was like something that like John Wayne or something like that was was up for, which is an odd because uh, when you see things like Brannigan, you realize it wouldn't be a good, good fit. 88 films released a few spaghetti westerns from time to time. Yeah, the 88 films kind of puts out a, a little bit of everything. Um, well, oh, Vinegar Shannon, when they first got started, they were primarily known for the adult films that they put out, even though some of their earliest releases weren't, weren't that type or weren't even the exploitation style that you would see now. They actually had a, a few more uh, serious films like Good Luck, Miss Wycroft. And... Um, and uh, the telephone book and things like that, things that you that wouldn't be what we would consider Vinegar Syndrome to later become, which was a, a company that, that later on became known for uh, for doing like criterion level releases for adult cinema uh, around the you know the seventies eighties era. Then Vinegar Syndrome dipped its toes into like a more serious exploitation stuff like horror and uh, and action like Sierra Santiago films, and they became more known for uh, more known for that. And horror is where a lot of their kind of bread and butter. Horror and kind of like different unique films is where it's uh, is where it's gone. So where Vinegar Syndrome was and where they are right now is very different. Uh, I watched Dominique, 
uh, the last night with a couple other films. And uh, if you've never seen Dominique, if you if you've ordered from Vinegar Syndrome like before, if you ordered for in the early days, and you think of movies like uh, I don't know Pets or uh, Psycho Cop Returns and stuff like that, and that's what you normally think about with Vinegar Syndrome. You know, kind of you know, fun, kind of cheesy, kind of sleazy type stuff. Um, but you know, ultimately fun. You know, watch you really really rewatch type movies. Uh, then uh, Dominique is going to surprise you because it's a uh, it's a gothic tale. It's a uh, it's a slow burn with uh, a little thriller with uh, with lots of atmosphere, uh, no nudity. <laughs> Uh, and a uh, very, very like no really gore in the film either. It's a uh, it's a very subdued film. Uh, you know it it stars Gene Simmons and uh, oh, Ralph Force is fantastic one. It stars Gene Simmons and Cliff Robertson uh, and Jenny Agutter. Definitely not names that you well maybe Jenny Agutter, but most of those are names you normally associate with uh, exploitation cinema. And Dominique is no different it is not an exploitation type of film well you're pick, you're picking the right stuff in my opinion movie madness criterion had does have some great stuff i'm not i will never not criterion i do have a, a little criterion collection of, of my own uh but not uh, not nearly enough but i i do have the uh the big one you can't see it here right now but one at least one criterion something that you really like now there's different ones to put out there, like stuff that I recommend for Don't Look Now is just a personal favorite of mine. And uh, from my uh, journalism school days, that uh, I've always looked at Don't Look Now as kind of like a, almost a study piece. Uh, for film too, actually, for editing. Uh, Don't Look Now is fantastic editing. Hey Wolf, great film, super creepy too, but uh, editing wise, I, I've always said like, if you're going into film, if you want to like, you're cinephile, if you want to be a filmmaker. My favorite Criterion release is actually going to be pretty simple. I got it recently. Uh, that's, the, that's the Bergman Cinema Set. It's the, uh, for, in my opinion, it is probably the, the greatest thing that they, ever, that they ever put out because of the curation. And I, I do hope that they keep doing curation with their future sets. <laughs> uh, how do I feel about Demonite? I actually like Demonite. I don't remember it very well. It's a, it's a bit of it's it's a strange, it's a strange film. Uh, I, uh, I I have it downstairs, and it's been ages since I've seen. It. I actually want to rewatch it because that's one of the early vinegar syndromes that I got. And uh, there's Demonite, and there's another one that I got. I think it's Fright there. And for the life of me, I watched them both one night. Like I double featured them. I can't remember them very well right now. I know I liked them. I kind of remember Frightmare a bit more. It's a bit like this horror actor that they you know that dies, and kind of these guys come to bring him back. Demon Eyed, uh, I think that's Alfredo Zacharakis or something like that. Uh, I could be totally wrong on that though. On the who the filmmaker is, he did like a couple different films that uh, Vinger Syndrome put out. I think The Bees was another one put out by the guy, the Demon Eyed. Am I getting that completely wrong? I might be mixing it up completely. Uh, you, know, you can check on it because it was only the first time I messed it up. But uh, I think Demon Knight and Frightman were put out around the same time. That's why I ended up getting them uh, together. One of my favorite, like, WTF, like, Vinegar Syndrome titles is, is definitely, uh, and you mentioned it, uh, Nightmare Weekend. Um, it's not a movie you're going to watch with kids or with your mom and dad, that type of thing. But, yeah. Uh, Nightmare Weekend. If you only want, like, a single title, like, rather than a box set, uh, Kiss Me Deadly. Uh, Kiss Me Deadly is my favorite uh, Criterion release. I would say my dad's is probably Night of the Hunter. Um, that, that's his favorite movie of all time. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> the way this goes, the way it is... You should see my typing sometimes. I'm on. I'll type something. I'm on Facebook, like on one of the pages, and I'll type this like big, long message, and I'll put it, and I'll be really satisfied with it. I'll look at it, and I'll see, like, you know, just other... Autocorrects or spelling errors that I made, then I'm like hitting that edit button to, to redo it again. Uh, so yeah, that happens to me all the time. <laughs> but yeah, no, um, Kiss Me Deadly is my favorite Criterion release out of all the ones that I uh, that I got. I, I love the film. 
I think the features on there are fantastic as well. Uh, Kiss Me Deadly is one of my favorite films. So I kind of remember No Warlock. But I really have to rewatch that one. I have a feeling that I haven't seen it all. Like I had to turn it off for some reason. Because I watched two movies that night. I watched All of Frightmare. And I started watching Demonoid. I don't know if I finished it though. I don't know if something happened and I didn't finish it. But I feel like I didn't finish it. Because I remember some of what you're saying. But I don't have a clear picture of it in my head. At all. So, I'm not even going to BS, I'm going to be honest with you. That's the, uh, that's the honest to God's truth when it comes to, uh, comes to that. Now, for people that don't normally see my Instagram videos or, or those other videos that I do, uh, right behind me is my, uh, is my glass display case where I have like a, a lot of different things, including the Bergman set and, you know, my complete series the wire so stuff, stuff like that uh somebody asked me if i do have any other agfas or what's on my like my watch list that i have upstairs uh so this is upstairs this is my uh my what i call my media room it's really my living room i have like uh one of one of my flat screens is here so uh usually what will happen is i'll watch some of my uh i'll watch a lot of my movies down here especially if they're ones that my better half doesn't like uh or, you know, the creepy ones. Um, if it's like the other stuff, uh, like she watched a lot of Vinegar Syndrome stuff with me, a lot of like the cheesy stuff. Uh, my Chauffeur is fantastic. Uh, it is a great film. I mean, like forget like just Vin great Vinegar Syndrome. It's a great film. One of the sexiest slipcovers. Uh, <laughs> this is my living room. Uh, right behind me is my uh, is one of my two glass display cases that I have. This one here, there's a history behind this one actually. There was a... Uh, a shop that was that was closing down. It was a, uh, a hair salon and like uh, a beauty place. And so, and they actually actually rented films there as well. So anyway, they had this glass display case. Uh, I bought this at the time for uh, for about a hundred dollars, which I thought was a great price for this. It's a huge display case. This thing is extremely heavy. It took uh, three people to move this. Uh, from where it is, its its base is like a, it's solid. It's a solid base. I don't yet, but I, I do love Blood Simple, so that is one that I will own down the road. I will be watching it on the Criterion Channel until I can get it. That's my secret layer, my other secret layer. Uh, but I put a lot of my releases here, uh, like on my uh, on my watch list right now. Things like AGFA's, The Violent Years, I have up here to watch, and. Uh, the other one, like kind of a double feature, do a quadruple feature because it's two on each. Take it out and trade. You know, Ed Wood stuff that I got here. Uh, synapses, a mosquito. I gotta do a rewatch on. And uh, I got asked about this. Uh, oh, I got two actually. I got a smaller display case over there that has like my uh, my Walking Dead. You know, two, three, and four. And my some stuff in there. Uh, my uh, Phantasm Spear set. So. Because I get asked about this one every time I'm in the TV room, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show it now. So, people, I always ask, you're Canadian, do you have the show? Yes, I'm Canadian. You know, how dare you tip pigeonhole me and say, do you have red green just because you're Canadian? Well, yes, but I do. I do have the red green collection. <laughs> and this, this is the big one. This is the, uh, the complete set. It was put up by Acorn. And... Uh, Let you guys see the inside of it. It's every season of it from 1991 to 2005, plus all the specials. So that answers that oft asked question. Every time I do a secret room video, somebody will come up to me and this will come in and chat. Usually they'll say, So you're Canadian. Do you have red green? Yes, yes, I do. So, uh, Let me get this put back in here. Oh, I totally missed what was said there. <laughs> I'm sorry. Never heard of it? It was like a, a show, a Canadian like a, kind of comedy show 
like that uh, started as like skits and became like its own series, and then they played it over in the U.S. and became like a big hit. Um, basically, it's just this handyman type guy. I know that. I think the way I, I have it is like much like Spider Man. Jace has a spaghetti sense that alerts him to come into this. Nice. I actually, I've got that here. Uh, I haven't got a chance to watch it yet. I got, I've got to watch the, them all together, and I kind of want to watch them with my better half because I don't think she's seen them. So you got the original, I'm guessing, and you want to get like two, three, and four. Apparently, uh, from what I've heard from MVD, um, you know, what I read on their, on their website, is that <laughs> we're Canadians. Uh, I consider it better than home for them. Uh, but uh, it's a, but it's a, what was I saying? I totally lost my, my train of thought. I'm sorry, guys. It's one of those nights. And of course, I'm watching this right now, too. Diagnosis murder. This is the company VI that I mentioned that has like a, a lot of sets online. Uh, on Amazon, and they have their own store, and they sell things for like super cheap there. But I know I was saying something that completely lost my train of thought, which is no, which I would, you know, is no big biggie for me because uh, I'm doing that all the time. Ah, oh, the Jamish ones. Yes, I guess I should. Uh, I guess I should mention that because the Criterion made announcements today, didn't they? So they announced the uh, Criterion releases coming up. And uh, let's. Uh, so their titles, and I was actually really excited about a couple of these. So they're putting out a, uh, a fast bender, like a B the BRD trilogy, The Marriage of Mar Maria Braun Veronique. Voss and Lola. Uh, it's a fast bender set. They're putting out Spike Lee's Do the Right Thing. Uh, they're putting out Europa, Europa Europa, and uh, 1984. I definitely want that. And the Baker's Wife. And one that I got extremely excited about because I'm a huge fan of this film, and that is uh, Jane Fond and Donald Sutherland in the Clute. So uh, definitely uh, one that I'm looking into, uh, into grabbing. Too many references? Huh? Yes. Clu yep. That's the one. I had no idea that they had it, but extremely glad that the Criterion are putting it out. I have been enjoying the Criterion channel. I haven't had much. I heard some people have had some issues with, uh, you know, with a couple of films that are like playing and stuff like that. But uh, it is, it is, you know, it's a newer channel. So, you know, to get the quirks worked out. I do. I'm still glad though that, that I'm an early adapter with it. I have sisters through uh, through Arrow Video. Uh, I got the Blu-ray of that, so I haven't like up. I haven't done because I, I had the Blu-ray of Sisters. I don't really see myself getting the Criterion of Sisters unless I found it like somewhere on on sale, for instance. Um, since I already have the have the film, it's a good film. I I do. I'm a really big fan of the uh, of the late Margot Kidder. Uh, that she was. I'm a Google Doc list, and what, she was one of the actresses that I really wanted to meet, like probably more than, than many like actresses out there. Quicksilver Highway. I got that here, you know, it's uh, the only poem you haven't seen. I, I liked it. It's an early one, you know, it's, uh, it's got William, William Finley. Yeah, William Finley's in that one. William Finley, Margot Kidder, Jennifer Salt. Um, uh, I really like it. I like the early De Palma stuff, especially. Uh, if you like De Palma, I think you're going to like it. There's, uh, because the, the Palma for me is, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty standard. Like, especially anything early to like mid, late, I, I like all the Palma stuff, but you know, to early De Palma, to the 80s De Palma as well, I was like, I was a huge, huge fan of. Obviously, uh, well, not obviously, but, uh, my, my favorite De Palma film 
is actually is body double. That's the one that I saw when I was uh, when I was young, and uh, I have I have a beard all the time, and uh, you rarely see me without it here on this channel. And there's a really good reason for that, and I will tell you, that's uh, because I have no chin, and uh, so beards work for guys with have weak chins. I got a weak chin. But I used to watch like uh, when I was a kid. Uh, no, nah, not at all, man. Everybody, lo Scarface got it. You gotta love it. There's a reason it's liked. And you, I used to watch this show called MTV Cribs. Uh, don't, don't, yeah, no. But uh, every time, like one of the singers would come on, or one of the rappers, you, they're always they're, uh, somewhere. There'd be like a poster or a copy or something they'd be like you know, yo, and of course, uh, I gotta represent here with with Scarface. Creep show. Oh, Stephen King. <laughs> I think over time, it sticks with you. You'll be surprised. You're going to be surprised at the stuff that uh, that that stick that stick with you. Because uh, I, I'm a huge fan of the Halloween series. So spheres back. I would. Somebody, I was at a, at a at flea market, and somebody said, "Yeah, well, I kind of like this Halloween film." I said, "Yeah, well, that's the one that uh, that had Don Shanks in it. it was number five. So, uh, so like, so you know, everybody that played like Michael Myers in Halloween. So at the time, I listed them off, and uh, this guy there was a kind of a prankster, like a prank or joke guy. So he uh, he went. There's a blockbuster in the town at that time, and he called called me up when I was out. And uh, I think one of my kids answered. And they said, you know, hi, this is, uh, this is Dick Warlock. And me and Don Shanks are here at Blockbuster waiting for, Aaron, waiting for Aaron. So, yeah, yeah. I think things will stick with you. Things that you, and you won't even know they're sticking with you. Like, it, it'll just be something that'll, that'll come to you. I never thought it was, I never thought it was weird or abnormal to remember some of the things I remember. Until I got into uh, certain situations where uh, I'd get asked certain questions on, on films. And, uh, and I'm like, oh yeah, well this is this. And then I, because I, because I like movies, talking about a film gets me going. And I could be sitting in the, in the back quiet playing with the dog or, you know, if I'm at a party or something like that, having a beer. Um, but all of a sudden they'll, uh, somebody mentioned movies and I'll be, and I can't shut up. First movie, get uh, Pulp Fiction, Scarface, and The Shining. Well, that's, well, you pick three good films. I'm I'm personally a Tarantino fan. I know some people. I think it's Tarantino's got like got a bit of backlash over the years, but I think a lot of it has to do with any time. Oops, something becomes really really popular, uh, and maybe becomes kind of popular in the uh, like, even with what with, with the casual like film crowd that uh, there'll be a portion. Of uh, it's the same thing with music, same thing with uh, with books or comics, uh, anything that becomes like uh, popular, you know, with the you know with the general public, there tends to be like a backlash, uh, kind of a popularity backlash, kind of uh, you know, oh yes, I I did like that back in the day, but not anymore. Now that everybody else likes it, I uh, I can't be bothered. Uh, that type of thing. What accent was that? That was a weird accent. Your favorites and glorious bastards. Uh, my favorite is, is Reservoir Dogs. Yeah, that's the thing, right? See, it sticks with you. Um, you start, you start watching stuff. You start listening to things, and this, you start. Basically, what's happening is you're remembering stuff that interests you. You're starting to find your niche, your groove, uh, with uh, with collecting. You're starting to find exactly uh, what you like, and because uh, it's going to stick with you. As you're saying, not a, not a fan of Tarantino Wolf. Do you not like the homages or? Because he has a style that does great on some people. Uh, but I personally really like Tarantino. And I'm like a. Receiver, <laughs> yeah, I. 
you think? For kind of an ex-actor, right? <laughs> I would have this dialect thing down. Uh, no. <laughs> Probably good I didn't go in that direction, you know what I mean? Uh, so your favorite? Pop Fiction tends to be like a favorite. It's, it, I like the film, it plays with the narrative too. It plays with the time structure. I like films that do that, to play with the time structure, play with the narrative. Uh, there are stuff like Memento and Irreversible. Though I, Irreversible is one of those movies that I really liked when I watched it. Uh, I've seen it like twice. I don't think I could watch it again, if you know what I mean. It's, if you've seen Irreversible, you probably know what I'm talking about because it's super disturbing. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> camera can't. the thing is, Wolf, is that I'm from Newfoundland originally, but, uh, when I was growing up, I lived in like in Ontario, I lived in Alberta, I lived in like different, different areas. So, uh, in the formative years, when I, you know, I came back to Newfoundland, I had, a. Uh, they told me my accent didn't sound right. I didn't sound like, new, like I was from Newfoundland. Uh, I personally think my Newfoundland accent shines through it. <laughs> but uh, no, I was told I, I sounded weird. I sounded off. So I still get asked to this day if I'm out, you know. So I can't quite place it. Are you from this area? I like the hateful eight. Uh, I, I really did. Uh, now, Hateful Eight takes from a couple like really good movies, like of course you know the Great Silence. Jackie Brown, I know you're a Jackie Brown fan. I heard um, Pam Greer. Who cannot watch Pam Greer over and over again? She is just stunning. My favorite Pam Greer is still Coffee. That's you know that's the one for me. She's at her peak there. And... <sighs> yeah, John, she's she's definitely on the Google Doc list of uh, amazingly. Universally, it eternally sexy actresses. <laughs> oh, really? That's the thing. You, you you kind of pick stuff up, but the thing is, when you move around a bit, you it kind of becomes a little bit broken. So you got a little bit from here, and a little bit from like uh, from this area. I um, I tend to think I talk fast, and uh, most of the areas that I lived in. Except for Toronto. Toronto's got a bit of a slower, slower dialect. Uh, but uh, when it comes to uh, living in places like Alberta and, uh, and in Newfoundland areas like that, there tends to be like a, a faster type of dialect. I like Jackie Brown. Jackie Brown, it's not my favorite. And I will agree that for me personally, it doesn't work on every level. I just expected more from it, I think. I, I think it's more me, more, more of my expectation level going in. Uh, anything like with Pam Greer, I love. I'm a huge lover of, uh, of, of films by Tarantino. But, uh, and uh, I think Jackie Brown's one, when I first saw it, I expected something a little bit different. So I think that's one I think that I'll like. Uh, <laughs> That uh, that I'll get that I'll like more as I you know as I rewatch it type of thing. Death Proof. Death Proof have mom has moments. Uh, Death Proof is one of those movies that I don't think is uh, is great Tarantino. But uh, it's a uh, it's definitely got some good. It, it's not as bad as people say. But it just seems all over the place. Like, and Death Proof came out the same year, like, it was done all together. Oh, she's gorgeous though, all the time. Have you ever seen Pam Greer not be gorgeous? I mean, even, in, like, in any film. Uh, and still, i got to go back to coffee, because, see? And here, I am in my 40s, and, you know, still dead sexy. No, <laughs> but, but no, um, so, yeah, so, so I'm in my 40s. Pam Greer's in her 40s. Not going to do me any good, though, because, you know. I'd be dead. My better half bury me in the backyard. 
But uh, I miss her so much tonight, actually. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Uh, she's just been gone for like a day. And I've watched like five movies. Um, I'm going for a, a campus tour tomorrow for the uh, school that I'm probably going to be attending. So that's going to be uh, interesting. Kill Bill? I like Kill Bill. Uh, bio, the, both VOMs are very different because they use different aspects of the, uh, you know, uh, different like, uh, like both East and West style aspects. I need a drink. Wait here, guys. I'm just going to grab some Fresca, which is in the next room. You guys can talk, can talk dialects in. I was going to say Jackie Chan. I'm going to say Jackie Brown. So the next room is my dining area. So... Because we don't usually dine in the dining room, we got like the table put to one side. I love Sin City, actually. I'm not a huge... I like Frank Miller's writing. I'm not a fan of Frank Miller. Desperado was okay. I uh, preferred El Mariachi. I'm actually kind of slightly nervous, Wolf, because it's my first time like going on this campus. and So I'm grabbing the bus tomorrow and going in, checking out the campus. Doing the whole thing before I start my computer training, so. Cheers to that. Tonight is Fresco. Rebel without a crew. No, I haven't read that. Hey, Adam. Safi. I've been making a few different, like, type of videos, so if there's anything that you guys like, would like to, uh, would like to see me do or like to see, hear me talk about, Always, you know, always feel free to put stuff in there. I've been, I've been asked to talk about my favorite directors. I've been asked to talk about like different, uh, different types of films that I like. I get asked everything, even things like, like show your laser discs or. Do you buy records? <laughs> This is a. This is the soundtrack to the pirate movie with Chrissy McNichol and Chris Reckins. The neat thing is, when I'm up here, I can actually like, just reach out my hand and like grab the stuff. I love the way that the records just have these, especially for soundtracks. <laughs> He's like spikes. I like the early Spy Kids. Uh, the last one I didn't like so much. The one with, I think maybe had Stallone in it. Oh, is your, oh really? I didn't know that. Uh, no, I haven't read it. I, I'd be interested in reading it, though. I'm going to keep an eye for that. I, uh, El Mariachi, I saw early on, it was like, uh, it came to my video store, and... Uh, Nobody was renting it because it was, uh, I think it was subtitled. So I actually bought it at the, from the store. <laughs> well, I had you move for his kids, eh? And Spike has ones that he did for his children. But, uh, so yeah, when Desperado came out, I was kind of like, I like Antonio Banderas, I like, you know, girls in it, I like Sam Hayek, but uh, I just really like the mariachi. And yeah, I know, it's, 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 I find it kind of odd, especially, like, I watch a bit of anime and stuff like that, too, and uh, some people that I know that, uh, that, that watch, that watch anime, like, really go against, like, subtitles, and, I, and that just blows my mind. What I recommend, I would really recommend Indicator. Their box sets, especially, are incredible. Night of the Demon is what I considered, like uh, the uh, like the release last year, like alongside uh, alongside of like uh, alongside the Bergman set. I put 
Night of the Demon, right, right up there with that, the indicator release. I've gotten all of the like the major box sets that he got so far. So I got the three and three hammer ones. I've got the Samuel Fuller one, the Bud Boddicker set, uh, both uh, William Castle sets, uh, the uh, the two Ray Harryhausen sets, and the uh, now at a print I think Sinbad set as well. So uh, I definitely recommend their uh, their box sets. Definitely. Uh, Happy birthday to me. They put it the best edition of that that came out. Uh, Torture Garden. Uh, that's how I've recommended that one to people. That one was because it was going out of print. So yeah, I would definitely recommend Indicator. Uh, I missed out on Charlie Varick when that was out. Indicator releases, a lot of them are, uh, the, make sure it's, I think a lot of the releases that I got are region free. Just make sure that you look to see what region they are first. Uh, I do recommend, you know, if investing into like a region free player though, because uh, it'll change the way that you, that you get stuff. Stone Killer. Bronson stuff is good, man. I'm a huge Bronson fan. Yeah, most of them are all region, I think. Uh, I think there may be a couple that aren't because, you know, there's maybe some issues with certain ones, but I think pretty much, pretty out much all of them. Charlie Varick's a fantastic film. Uh, Blue Collar is another one with Paul Schrader. I personally loved the movie Blue Collar. Uh, I don't have that one yet, which is one I do have to get because I am a Paul Schrader fan. And I really do like that film. I definitely recommend that. You know, it depends on the type of films you're into, too, right? But Indicator has a nice variety, a nice selection. Uh, I like when companies do that. Because you already have the movies that you like. Now, especially, if, like, Adam, if you bought, in a lot, bought a lot of, like, Twilight Time stuff, then you probably you know, wouldn't get some Indicator stuff because it's already there as well. Oh man, Ten to Midnight, Movie Madness. Uh, definitely Ten to Midnight. So I'm going to mention Eureka there. I think, and uh, I got to say, uh, Eureka is having a sale right now. So you might want to you know, check their Facebook page because I know that Eureka is having a, having a sale at this, uh, at, at this present time. And they're uh, doing a few different ones. I consider Walter Matthau to be an extremely underrated actor. He do, not enough people talk about the work that he does. There's a lot of actors, like 70s actors, that I don't think get, that I don't think get enough mention. Walter Matthau is definitely high in the list of actors that are really good, but you don't hear people talk about them a lot. Richard Pryor's best work. I would agree with that, actually. Because uh, I, I love Blue Collar. Goodfellas over Casino. I like them both. Uh, Scream Factory's Ten to Midnight, yeah. I actually got that. That was one of the movies I got for my dad for, for his birthday, actually, was uh, Ten to Midnight, because I'd already gotten one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I saw Casino back in the, in the theater days. The, uh, I, was, uh, I was a fan. I'm, you know. Uh, but, yeah, my favorite? I don't know. Scarface. Uh, but, uh, you know, over Goodfellas or Casino. I don't know, really. Uh, casino, maybe. Which is going to seem like sacrilege because everybody would say Goodfellas. Because Goodfellas is such a good movie, too. I like when we talk about directors like Math, actors like Mathal. Mathal, like Jack Lemmon is another one that, you know, often work with Mathal. And they did... They did like some great stuff together, but there's so many actors out there that that don't have the the name. Though they've done like just as like big like a serious amount of work as the guys like uh, Pacino or De Niro have done, but they just don't have the uh, the the name nowadays that uh, that those guys have because you know they're still around. There's you know still in the public eye. They have certain films that have made them iconic. An actor. Do everything? Yes, actually, the Vinegar Syndrome have hinted at box sets uh, often. And uh, nothing has come out yet, but I have heard that they are working on one. I have no idea what it is. Taxi Driver. 
But I would prefer King of Comedy over both of them. So I'm weird that way. But I, I really like King of Comedy. Uh, if you have not seen that one, I strongly recommend it. If you looked at the Joker trailer and you thought, this looks really good, uh, you you got to see King of Comedy. Uh, that's hands down uh, one of my strong favorites. It's one that I've always really enjoyed. Is your favorite film of all time? Yes, a good favorite film to have now. The cons- I got the, uh, you know, the DVD with the cards they put at the time of a taxi driver. I really liked it. Kind of a fun set to have. But I, uh, no, I love Taxi Driver, love Raging Bull, uh, but uh, King Comedy tops it for me. It's just something, maybe something kind of personal, something maybe that hit me. Uh, yeah, Rupert Pupkin. Uh, really interesting character. Uh, and definitely one of De Niro's best, one, one of my favorite De Niro roles. And Jerry Lewis now. Maybe that's the one I'm thinking of. Did that have like, no, no, it wasn't a steelbook, but I got. I got the, uh, I think it was a bit of digibook that I got. Mean Streets. Yes, I love Mean Street. There are so many great, like these, like kind of like gritty films that, you know, that came out of that era, that came out of that 70s era. Stuff that you can really just kind of, kind of just like dive into. And there's such great documentaries out there, but like, but 70s cinema, that I uh, that I would recommend. I got them downstairs. I like it. There's just too much, man. Yeah, <laughs> guys, just way too much. Uh, I see someone's mentioned the Kentuckian, which is a fantastic little western there. Which I, do I have? I may have that actually. I gotta watch that again if I do. Because that's a good one. That's a really good one. Crusades is a little bit of everything. Scorsese actually is one of the uh, the chairs of the uh, Marrakesh Film Festival in Morocco. He uh, he's there every year. Like he, one of the people that like that sits on the chair and one of the you know one of the founders like the start of the Marrakesh uh, Film Festival. We get like a lot of like big directors that'll go there. Like you know Scorsese and uh, I'm sure like guys like Plansky and you know all those guys have shown up there over the years. Now my uh, better half sister, she uh, works there a lot at the uh, festival, so she's got to meet like people like Scorsese, and I've been, I'm so jealous of it. I don't, I haven't got any of those. The only retro cut like VHS I got is, uh, well you saw the one that's in the VHS case, is uh, the, uh, you got two of them, The Breakfast Club, I think it's Breakfast Club, right? And, uh, and another one actually, I think Annabelle. It's okay. Actually, I do plan on doing like a Western video with the, with Jace, who knows way more about this than I do. So he'll be definitely leading that Western that'll pro- video. That'll probably be on his channel. Hey, Brian, did you hear about the Criterion release? I'm sure you did. Because Clute, hell yeah, and the Fastbender set. We spoke about the murder here a, a while back. Five new Criterion releases coming out. Plus, right now, Eureka sale. So if you're into, want to get some of the Eureka titles. Which kind of like, you didn't know Scorsese. Yeah, that's, that's Scorsese. Let's see if I can find it here. Can't see it here now, but there's a Eureka sale going on right now. And apparently, they're putting in more seasons of Green Chill. Never seen Last Temptation? Are you into that style of film, though, Wolf? Like, if it's not a film that you're into, 
you're probably not going to see the last temptation of Christ. But if it's uh, if something interesting, I like Willem Dafoe. That's what got me into it. Uh, oh, so here are some of the Eurekas that are that are on sale right now. I just went to the to the website thing over on Amazon UK, I think. So we have Robinson Crusoe on Mars, uh, Born Free, The Entity. Oh, The Entity's a good one. January, Journey to the Center of the Earth, Park Row, Lubitsch in Berlin, six films of Renetz Lubitsch, 1918 to 1921, Harakiri, Harakiri, Sunrise for Aman Khan, which is a fantastic one. I say Brain's a good film. La Planet Savage, I'm not going to try to pronounce that. Unibaba, which is the better version that was put out. Simon Paul Schrader. You got so many cool, like, Too Late Blues, Nashville, Diary of Lost Girl, Dragon Inn, Day of the Outlaw, Touches In, The Letter to Three Wives, Coronico, Shane, Masters of Cinema Edition, uh, Flight of the Phoenix, Pla Past the Glory, Manfrawl Seasons, Two Road Together, Creepy, Bakumatsu, Tayoden, The Barefoot Contessa, Dark Side of the Sun, Made Marion and Her Merry Men, the complete series, and Wolf Creek, the compl complete first series. So there, that's some of the Eureka stuff that's on sale right now. In case you want to go grab some Eureka stuff. Well, right now, I need more tea. The fresca is definitely not hitting the spot. But I want to thank you guys for coming in and joining me in a different area. Now, let me know how you like this area and this backdrop, because I can do some videos here. The neat thing about this is I can actually kind of like turn around here and dive into some of the stuff that's into the display case as uh, as well and uh, we'll uh, maybe one of these days I'll do an over by the other display case so you guys can see like see both from here in these videos anyway thank you so much for watching tonight uh, it's around uh, about 12 12 30 12 ish here so I'm probably gonna watch uh, one more movie before I go to sleep tonight <laughs> but uh Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a fantastic evening. I am Aaron. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I desperately need tea. You guys are the movie club. You guys rock, and thank you so much for joining me tonight. I'm on my own for the next couple weeks, so it's uh, always uh, always great to, to invite you guys in for a fantastic talk. Good night, all. Have a great evening. Bob was coming.